this is going to be another question and answer video. And the question has to do with John chapter 20 and verse 22, which says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Okay, so the setting in John 20, 22 is the Lord Jesus appearing to the disciples after his resurrection. And he breathes on them and says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So the question I received was, What is the difference between John 20, 22 and what happens in Acts chapter 2? And this is another pretty deep question. Because in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the question is, what's the difference between John 20, 22 and Acts 2, 4? And I'll read them again just to make it more clear. In John 20, 22 it says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then in Acts 2, 4 it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now first, when you when you first look at it, it looks like John 22, 20, 22 is when they receive the Holy Ghost. And in Acts 2, 4, it looks like when they're filled with the Holy Ghost, which there is a, there is a difference be between, you know, having the Holy Ghost and being filled with it. But I believe what's happening in Acts chapter 2 is actually when they're baptized by the Holy Ghost. So I believe there is a difference between what took place in John 20, 22 and Acts chapter 2 in that the, they weren't baptized by the Holy Ghost in, a, in, in John 20, 22, but they were in Acts chapter 2. And the reason I believe that is because of Acts chapter 1 and verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And then in Acts chapter 2, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So, that's what it seems like. That's what's going on to me. So, I believe the baptism of the Holy Ghost finally happens in Acts chapter 2. And this is when men begin to be baptized into the body of Christ. And this is something different than what men experienced in the Old Testament in terms of the Holy Spirit. And if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it talks about this baptism. It says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. So the very moment that you came to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you put your trust in Him to be your Savior, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. And remember, this baptism has nothing to do with water. It is a baptism that you didn't even realize happened the moment that you believed. While Jesus made it possible to get into his body when he died on the cross, which was obviously before Acts 2, I don't believe they actually started getting placed in the body until Acts chapter 2. But the reason I believe the body, it was made possible to get in the body and, and uh, when Jesus died on the cross is because of Ephesians 2.16. In Ephesians 2.16, it says, And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So this verse proves that even though the way into the body of Christ was made possible when Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and resurrected, it proves the body was made possible at the cross, but I don't believe men began to be baptized into the body until Acts chapter 2. So, what took place in John 20, 22? That becomes the question. If they were baptized into the body in Acts chapter 2, what happened in John 20, 22? Well, what, I, what seems to happen there was, Jesus was doing to them what happened to people in the Old Testament. We know that what ha what the Holy Spirit did in the Old Testament was different than what He does today. Because if you look at John 7, if you turn to John 7, and look at verses 38 through 39, it says, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, 
because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So this proves that the Holy Spirit was doing something different before Jesus was glorified. The Holy Ghost was not yet given. So th this is how we know that the Holy Spirit was doing something different in the Old Testament. We know He was there because we read about it in the Old Testament. But it was something different going on than in the New Testament. So see how the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could come and go with someone. In 1 Samuel 16, 14, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So Saul was not baptized by the Holy Ghost. He was not placed into the body of Christ because it wouldn't even be possible for him to be put into the body of Christ because that wasn't even made possible until the cross. According to that verse we just read in Ephesians chapter 2, let's read it again, Ephesians 2, 16, and, they might, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So how could Saul be in the body? And if he's not in the body, that proves he was not baptized into the body by the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And then in Psalm 51, 11, David says, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. A lot of people believe that the Holy Spirit didn't actually enter people in the Old Testament. But it seems he did. In verses like Ezekiel 2, 2, which says, And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and that I heard him that spake unto me. So the Spirit actually entered Ezekiel, and not just came on him. So while the Holy Spirit would come on people, and even enter people in the Old Testament, it could also leave the person. Today, it's completely different. Today, you, when you got saved, you were baptized into the body by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit seals you and never leaves you. And this is different than what happened to the, uh, the disciples in John 20, 22. This is how John 20, 22 is different than what happened in Acts chapter 2. I believe what happened in John 20, 22 is exactly what happened to people throughout the Old Testament. When they had the Holy Spirit, but yet they weren't sealed by the Holy Spirit. They weren't sealed into the day of redemption. And... They weren't placed into the body of Christ. and it, But today, it's a completely different thing. Whereas Saul and uh, Samson lost the Holy Spirit, and David was worried about losing the Holy Spirit, we never lose the Holy Spirit, and we shouldn't be worried about it. Because Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. Ephesians 1.13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. But this doesn't seem to start happening, as I said, until Acts 2. So I do believe there is a difference between John 20:22 20, and Acts 2. And that in John 20:22, 20, the Lord was doing just like he did to people in the Old Testament. And in Acts chapter 2, there is this is when men begin to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and this has nothing to do with water. This is a spirit baptism, like it talks about in 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen. This is the one baptism that saves, that has nothing to do with water, that happens at the moment of salvation. But I believe, uh, that's what I believe, and I hope this answers the question that this brother in Christ had. And feel free to send any more questions to the email hensleybiblebeliever at gmail.com.